Hello my soccer universe. It's a painful video to make because of my team. I have to say not many things did go in Germany and especially in Austria my way. So it's better get over with it. Yes, it would have been easy to make the Western Europe video first, but I decided now let's do this one. It's a little bit less work. I decided to give my Wolfsburg jersey, I think a channel debut. Uh, they qualified for the Champions League. So very well uh, for that. We will spend a whole lot of time talking about, I think, the biggest story. Yes, we had teams qualifying for Champions League. We had a few teams saved from re relegation. I think the biggest story is definitely 100% Robert Lewandowski matching Gerd Müller's 40-goal record and in a season. And he probably will go one higher next week. This is an incredible record that we will spend some time talking about. We also had that Frankfurt completely uh, pooped on their chances of qualifying for next year's cha uh, Champions League. So a really good season for Frankfurt ends with a sour taste. We have therefore Dortmund and Wolfsburg qualifying. And on the bottom we have three teams that are now saved with Hertha I3 or two. Uh, with Hertha, yeah, three teams, Hertha, Mainz and Augsburg and three still fighting for uh, one safety spot, one relegation spot and one going down in Köln, Bremen and Bielefeld. In Austria, Lask, yeah. I said I'm a little bit optimistic the way schedule is going. I knew that Salzburg is going to roll over them. Uh, talk a little bit about that and what's even worse is uh, they cannot even finish in third anymore. And it's again, uh, it's a rather disappointing end to, to the season. Uh, it might also be for Rapid because Sturm Graz could actually pip them to a second place, which would be a pretty big achievement. And so I want to start in Austria to get it past but the, the pain behind me. Um, we said last week uh, that, uh, let's start with something funny. I said, Sang uh, Sang Burton is now last in the table and they're going down and maybe there's a saving grace. Yes, there is a saving grace because the first and the second place team in the second division, one is Liefering, who will probably win it, who cannot be promoted because they're basically a youth team of Salzburg. And second is another team from Linz that uh, has been really doing well uh, because they don't really have a stadium and uh, financially not so great. They've been really playing a great season. They decide we don't want to go up. And so it's between the third and the fourth team, which is Innsbruck or Klagenfurt, uh, who will have to play a relegation against St. Burton. So St. Burton has a chance of staying in, in the league. The Austrian league is just, especially on, on the lower level, it's just absolute madness there. Lask, I did not watch anything. I've, I'm done with the season because I know, A, uh, we really were looking bad uh, already this year because of all the injuries. I said it before, I don't want to re re reiterate that, but also Lask really doesn't have a history of finishing a season strong. It's always the other way around, that we're just hanging on and we're losing. I think I can imagine, what, I can remember one season where we played well towards the end. And so, yeah, I, I did not watch the game and yeah, I would have been really disappointed. Just listen to that goal sequence. In the 19th, Eggestein gives last the lead. In the 20th, Mwepu equalizes. And in the 21st, Okafor gives Salzburg the lead. He didn't know that you can concede a goal from your own kickoff and from the opponent's kick, kick, kickoff all within a minute. It's rather disappointing. I'm not one of those fans that wants the coach to be gone because I really think you need to give him time and you cannot judge this season uh, just to merit. And I think what I saw in the, um, uh, especially in the fall, I think if we can keep this up, we are easily the second best team in Austria. And now we probably uh, will play in the conference league and maybe we have to play a playoff even that because as we will see, uh, fourth place is not even guaranteed, it's fourth or fifth. Absolute disappointment, absolute disappointment. We were 5-1 down, we pulled one back, um, we missed the penalty, of course. What more to It's just the whole same, same old, same old. And we didn't get any help from Rapid either, who themselves find themselves in a big hole. Um, they get the lead, they're leading at halftime, and then Sturm Graz is rolling over them. Kiteshvili, Yeboa in the 60th, Yeboa in the 72nd, Kuhn in the 79th, and then Stoppersham Ljubic making 4-1 for Sturm, who now have a real shot 
at finishing second. This is something that was never really in the cards for them. So uh, looking at the table, we can actually see, I mean, it's not goal difference. It's, uh, yeah, it, it comes down to goal difference because if they finish level on points, uh, they would both be moved ahead of a team that finishes level. That's why last cannot, even if you finish level, uh, level on points since uh, Rapid and Sturm Graz's points are rounded down, they would get, go ahead of last. Last cannot finish third any, any, anymore despite the moment still having a better goal difference. Um, but Sturm really has a shot of pipping Rapid, um, although I think probably Rapid will get the win, to be honest with you. Um, and we have to see where Wolfsburg uh, will finish up. It is just disappointing from my point of view. On the bottom, uh, we also see, I mean, basically everything done with Austria against Hartberg in the playoff. And then the winner, a one game playoff, will then play a two game playoff against the fifth place team. And please let it be Wolfsburg. I don't want this season to be over. Uh, as I said, I think. Last will probably finish fourth. I mean, there really has to be go many things wrong. I think at Rapid and I think at Sturm will win the final games, um, as disappointing as it is. And yeah, let's finish the Austrian season uh, for now. Let's go to Germany. And before we go into any relegation promotion, let's celebrate Robert Lewandowski. Um, as a penalty awarded at Freiburg. Freiburg was dead set. We're not gonna. The record will not happen while in our stadium. No. Penalty given. Uh, Lewandowski steps up. He matches the record. 40 goals in a season. Missing even four games. That's nuts. Um, he celebrated by lifting his shirt. If he would pull, have pulled pull over, he would have gotten a yellow card. So he just lifted it. Forever Gerd. Since, you know, he's matching Gerd. Gerd Miller is playing his respects to him. Then he got a guard of honor from uh, the entire Bayern team. Um, of course, the question is whose record is bigger? Um, I, there are two things that go for and against Lewandowski. I think uh, for Lewandowski is that he has a shorter minutes per goal ratio than uh, Gerd Müller. I think it's 56 to around 80 minutes. On the other side, Lewandowski was taking penalties, which Gerd Müller was not. So, uh, we could also look at it in many ways, um, who scored more important goals, blah, 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 blah. I think scoring 40 goals in 34 games, in 30 games actually, because he missed four, is an unbelievable goal scoring feat. Even in a league that is as uh, nice to goal scorers as the German league is, this is just... A, this was a record that no one thought could be broken. I st still think that the overall Goal tally for 365 goals for Gerhard Müller will be really, really hard to break. Uh, probably not by Lewandowski himself, but it's an amazing record. It just, you have to put this really in context. Breaking a record by Gerhard Müller, this is the gold standard of goal scoring records. And Lewandowski breaking, or at least equaling at the moment, he has not broken it yet, but equaling that is a feat that in modern times was unthinkable. Yes, this is a free-scoring Bayern team at the, um, uh, at the danger of also conceding loads of goals, but still, you need to have a good team to get that many goals. And the team really wanted to get that record. That it finishes 2-2 was a little bit maybe uh, underwhelming, but in any case, uh, it may be Sané had a goal this on uh, 51st, but he gets it two, two, two minutes later. But, um, you know, right in the celebration of Bayern, Gulde scored the 1-1, one, one, uh, then it was 2-2-1, two, uh, two, two, and then later lay on uh, Gunther gets the equalizer for Freiburg, Fre Fre who played their hearts out, as has to be said. Let's talk rally relegation. Bielefeld-Hoffenheim was one of those games where Bielefeld gave it their all. And Hoffenheim just used their superior talent to make it an even game, but Bielefeld definitely was more the front foot. However, they had to chase a Kramaric goal or, or, or the fifth minute Vogelsang with a wonderful free kick. Not a free kick, not something that you would you would expect from, from a team that normally only has the smallest budget, but is really going down. This was a great piece of skill. Makes it 1-1. One, one. There were plenty of chances for Bielefeld to win that one, but in the end they need to um, stay satisfied. With this 1-1, one, one, which may or may not work for them, to be honest. 
Augsburg Bremen. I think the first half was more for Bremen. They, it was a heated game. Uh, also, from from the other, the Augsburg president was yelling on the, on, on the pitch. It was absolute. The nervousness was going back and forth everywhere. And the first one who snapped was Vargas, who actually didn't hit his uh, player, but he clearly made it a kicking motion enough to uh, having him sent off. And then Bremen, I think once hit the woodwork, um, there were chances there for Bremen to take take the lead. However, it all turned sideways for Bremen uh, when goes with a second yellow is sent off in the 49th. And at that point, Augsburg, who were not really well in the game, smelled blood in the water. Kedira gets the 1-0 for Augsburg and in the 9 and the Kali Judy penalty sets it uh, to 2-0 uh, I, I think it, it, it is there where Bremen really hit the woodwork I mean it goes on the upright it goes across, uh, uh, along the line just a few centimeters and there's an e e e equalizer you know I like Bremen to stay in the Bundesliga uh, but it really doesn't look well for them and they fired the coach Kofeld with one game to go. Now Thomas Schaaf comes in. It seems like there's panic and Bremen prize of are not panicking. There's panic all around and I actually have not high hopes for Bremen to, still, uh, to stay in. And they might then be uh, the team that has been the most seasons in the Bundesliga will potentially go down. And Bayern will take over that record too. Hertha Köln... Uh, was not a great game, there was a lot of fight. Köln maybe for the first half hour, slightly the better team have, have, having him a good, good chance. But then Hertha got two good ch chances and then it kind of, always oh, slight advantage, Köln I had the feeling. But it ended with a nil-nil uh, result that thanks to Augsburg winning, saved Augsburg, also saved Hertha. And at the same time the win for Augsburg also saved Mainz. So uh, that was a crucial re re result there with Hertha getting those, those points. They also managed to stay in and it has to be said, this was an amazing feat because Hertha has been playing every three days. They are on the 15th, on the 12th, on the 9th, on the 6th, on the 3rd. Five games every three days because of COVID restrictions and they have not lost a single one of them, although Köln was really one. Uh, that they could have lost. Köln give themselves a fighting chance, but they're still down in there, as we'll see in the table. Which leads us now to the fight for the top four spot, where um, Schalke, or well, I have to say, Frankfurt messed that one up. And Frankfurt, ever since Adi Hütter, a month ago, we thought that Frankfurt is sailing into the Champions League. I would have loved it if Frankfurt and all Wolfsburg get into, into the Champions League. And Adi Hütter jumps ship. Freddy Bobic jumps ship, and since then Frankfurt. I'm not saying that this is the reason, but there's a clear point in the Frankfurt season who also, like Lask, have a record of not finishing strong. Hünteler uh, on a penalty rebound um, gives Schalke the lead. However, Frankfurt turns around. Ndika in the 51st gives them the lead, and uh, uh, Andre Silva has equal as in the 29th. And right coming back, Idris, see wonderful attack by, by, by the way, makes it 2 2. And then Flick, Florian Flick, not Hansi Flick, although his nickname is Hansi. And Hopp, Matthew Hoppy made it 4 2 Schalke. Frankfurt can pull one back again through Silva, but they cannot even find an equalizer. And they lose, and basically, big present here to Dortmund, who take full advantage, get the win at Mainz. And the Mainz that has been celebrating has to be said fairly so. Cagliari, please, why don't you celebrate? Uh, no, you have to make my life miserable. Mainz did not make Dortmund's life miserable in Dortmund with an incredible come comeback. Their chance of making the Champions League were only 8% just a month ago, and now they're in for sure. Guerrero, Royce, Brandt, and a late penalty for Mainz. See Dortmund book a place in Nexus Champions League, and Wolfsburg does the same. They also knew they only need one point. That's what they get. Philip scores two goals, especially I think his first one was an absolute stunner where he gets the ball from Arnold, um, Paul pulls it up and then ball is in, 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 into the net. However, Leipzig come back in the second half to make it 2-2 and I want to point out the Kluivert, Kluivert goal uh, to make it 1-2 where he gets the ball and with one move posterizes uh, Mbabo and despite me wearing the Wolfsburg, that's the 
picture that I've chosen for this game. Uh, Absolutely not smooth. Uh, it has to be said, the way that Mbabu uh, recovers is actually not that bad, but that move completely killed him. It's uh, reminiscent of Messi on Boateng and then late sub, it's a penalty, makes it 2-2. Two, two. So with all that, we have, with one round to go, the following standings. We have the top four are settled. We thought it will go down the wire. Frankfurt messed that up. Frankfurt will go to the Europa League. And ahead of the season, they probably would have been very, very happy with that season. But now, kind of the disappointment because you had it. You had it. And then you threw it away. That uh, is rather disappointing. There is a slight battle for the final spot for the Europa Conference League between yeah, Stuttgart, Gladbach and Union. Pro potentially Freiburg in there. Um, as let's, we will see then in the expected standings who I, who my model predicts to go in there. Then Augsburg, Mainz and Hertha are safe. And on the bottom it's Bielefeld, Bremen and Köln. If you look at already the chances, Bremen is the one that you have to worry about most. Bielefeld actually with having the points looking not all that bad. And one reason why Bremen is uh, in a worse shape than Köln is because uh, Köln will have to play Schalke, which in many ways you would think is an easy game. But before we go to the next uh, round, here are the expected final standings. And it says as much Bielefeld, safe, Köln and Bremen very, very tight, but Köln just ahead of Bremen in the relegation spot. And yeah, one of my two favorite teams will probably, uh, of of my of two teams that I really support, I mean, the Stolz Stolzke is the best one in there, uh, will go down, which hurts a little bit with Schalke also going down. I mean, uh, it's a bad season for the teams that I actually like in Germany, uh, it has to be said. Uh, as for this Conference League, it's Union Berlin. Let's see if they can make it. And with that, let's really look at the final um, um, matches. Bayern against Augsburg seems to like made for Lewandowski to break the record. Um, Kern against Schalke. There is a rivalry between those two, but um, I would think if Kern gets it to, to, together, they can actually beat Schalke. Uh, then we have Stuttgart against Bielefeld. Not easy, but because Stuttgart can do something for this Europa Conference League if they want. Only Berlin has a hard task with Leipzig and Bremen against Gladbach also. Maybe. Um, I think it will be really, really hard for Bremen to get a win against Gladbach, but who knows. So yeah, that's what we had over this past week. And as I said, Lask really sucked. Frankfurt in a way sucked. Köln sucked. Bremen sucked. What can I say? It was not my weekend and I know that the week, the season will not be fondly remembered in these two league, these two uh, countries will not be fondly remembered by me, unfortunately. Any case, let me know what you thought about uh, the action this weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.